Hello everybody and welcome back to me and the, the Warlock of Firetop Mountain. Now when we last did, when we last played we killed the slave master, tried to free his pal, but his pal rebelled against us. So let's go on eastwards to the boss. We arrive at another junction in the passage. Turn northwards or continue eastwards. Well, I'm gonna go northwards because it seems like there's only one room. The passageway leads into a square dungeon chamber. There are two doors in the eastern wall and two in the western wall. On the opposite side of the room, another passageway leads away north. The first door to the right is well used, and putting your ear to the keyhole, you listen and hear a man screaming for help from the inside. Before deciding what to do next, you listen at the other doors as well. From behind the second door to the right, you hear a thumping sound on the wood. Hello? Hello? Not funny! Open door! Okay, I think that's like a goblin. Oh, no, ogre, whatever they are. The first door to the left is made of solid metal. Listening at the door, you hear the sound of tortured screams coming from within. Putting your ear to the second door, you... To the left, you hear nothing. The eye of the cyclops is unlikely to be in a dungeon cell. But you never know. Okay, which one? The guy, the orc, the solid metal, or the nothing? I'm gonna go for the the second door to the right. Oh, okay, it's uglier. As you approach the door, the banging gets louder and the bolts start to shake. Come on, Gner Gnurk. Let out, waking up. Sliding back the rusty bolt and opening the door, you come face to face with a panicked looking goblin with a horrific creature closing in behind it. Slime beast, slime beast, run! Squeaks the panic goblin and lashes out at you. The toad like slime beast joins in the, on the fray, opening its mouth wide. It's full of long, spiked teeth. And let's fight. Oh, the map looks oh, disgusting. All slimy. Okay. Uh, what does the shaking mean? The shaking means he's gonna attack, isn't it? Attack. Yes, I guessed correctly. Move. Shoot. Move. And piercing strike. Ah, you suck. Attack. Come on, move this way. Gonna attack this one. Yes! Quick jab. Boom! Attack. I win! You lost no stamina and gained four souls. I have defeated the monsters. Initially, it looks as though there is nothing of value in the slime beast's cell. However, upon a second glance, you notice a blue candle sitting in the muck. I'm gonna take it. Although it is an odd place for a candle, you decide to take it with you. Make them in handy in one of the darker areas of the mountain. Put it in your backpack. And leave the cell. I'm gonna open the first door on the right containing the screaming man. You unbolt the door and swing it open. A nauseating stench hits your nostrils. Inside the room, the floor is covered with bones, rotting vegetation, and slime. A wild haired old man, clothed in rags, rushes at you screaming. Oh my word. That guy looks. <sighs> His beard is long and grey and he is waving an old wooden chair leg. Is he simply insane as he appears or has this been some kind of trap? Try to shout at him calm down driver. I'm, I'm gonna try calm down. You start to shout you are free at the top of your voice but you are swiftly cut off by a table leg to the face. I just stamina. In your disguise the delirious old man must think you are one of the orcs who has been holding him prisoner. There is no reasoning the man with the man in this state. Prepare for combat. I don't wanna kill him! He's got a cool character model though. I'm going to pierce and strike here. No. Attack. Wow. That didn't take long. I have defeated the prisoner. You run and the emicated prisoner through the chest with your weapon as he rushes at you. No, I don't kill him. 
He crumples to the filthy floor in an instant. If only you hadn't been wearing this disguise, perhaps you would not have startled the delirious man into such a desperate attack. Well, nah. Torture dreams. Stupid disguise. The door is not locked and opened. The room in front of you seems to, to be a small torture chamber with various torture devices around the wall. Well, duh, how else would there be tortured screams? In the center of the room, two small hunched goblins are having their fiendish way with a dwarf who is tied to a hook in the ceiling by his wrists. The two hunchbacks are poking and cutting him viciously with their sword. I'm gonna kill you two. The dwarf lets out a final scream and falls silent, eyes closed. His captors make disappointed noises and look around angrily as if you, it was your fault the dwarf had collapsed. I can't let these goblins get, get away with such barbaric practices. I'm gonna fight them. I'm gonna kill them all. Fight. Oh, the dwarf died. Right, okay, come on. Gotcha. Clashing. I don't know how this works. I win! Yes. Attack. Aww. Attack. Oh. Attack! Yes. Clashing again. Okay. I got a snake eyes. Death. Move. And quick jab. I win again. You lost no stamina again for souls. I have defeated the goblins. You cut down the dwarf. With the last of his strength, he opens his eyes, looks at you, then looks downward. His eyes close again, and this time he breathes his last. You gently rest the dead dwarf on the floor. What will you do now? Search the, the goblins? Bravely, you search the bodies of the two dead goblins. As you go through the pockets, you find a large piece of sweet smelling cheese. I'm gonna take it. You take uh, the cheese. Who knows? It might just come in handy. You decide to leave the torch. Oh, come on. Why can't I do the other thing? Can I open the second door to the left? The metal one. The door is unlocked. Opening it, you find yourself at the thresholds of the orc's weapon store. A torch hangs from the wall, lighting up a small armory room stocked with swords, shields, helmets, daggers, breastplates, and the like. Boom! A circular iron shield with a golden crescent lies at the far end of the room. However, if you do not use the shield, it is worthless to you. I'm gonna search the room. You poke around the room. The weapons are blunted and worthless, and the helmets are battered and rusty. You decide to inspect the breastplates on the shelves to see if there's anything worthwhile there. You examine the breastplates and shelves thoroughly, but there appears to be nothing of value. I'm assuming that that shield is very powerful, and if I'd taken someone else, I would have been able to use the shield and would have been really good. Bad. Exiting the dungeon, you hear the sound of water ahead of you and make out a grilled porticulus at the end of the passageway. Before you can reach the porticulus, you have to cross a bridge. Uh, that passes over a gully of gurgling, brackish water. You suspect it may actually be a sewer, judging by the smell rising from it. Okay, and kill the guy on the bridge. As you make your way towards the bridge, you pass a small creature which appears even uglier than the orcs you have encountered. The goblin salutes smartly, while well, the smartly as a goblin can, as you pass by. It then returns to picking up the boils. Oh. Achievement unlocked. Zagor's finest. Leave the orc barracks in disguise. As you cross the bridge, you pass out of sight of the sentry post. Having had enough of looking and smelling like an orc, you discard your disguise. And leave the orc barracks. You arrive at the end of the passage. An iron porticulus blocks your way in there, and no amount of charging is going to budget. Okay, so I need dynamite. On the wall to your right are two levers, and it seems likely that these levers have something to do with raising it. I'm gonna go for the right one. <laughs> Get it? Not really. Probably not. You hear a deep rumbling noise and the ground begins to shudder. Slowly and noisily, the porticulus rises into the ceiling. With hesitation, you walk towards the junction, listening carefully. Okay, who's that? Suddenly, a terrified young man runs into you. His white, ruined, embroidered robes are torn and smudged with dirt. He looks at you with panic in his wide eyes. I yield. Education is not worth this much danger, no matter how great the reward. You calm the young student down and he begins to relax. My name is Ian the White, he says. 
I am a humble acolyte seeking entry into the school of sorcery. You learn that he gained entry, but he was deemed unworthy by the elemental masters. Hmm, I wonder if this fellow knows where the eye is located. Maybe. Ask about Zagor, ask about the school, ask about the eye of Cyclops. Who's Zagor again? I forget. Ask about the school. You ask the young acolyte about the school of sorcery. It's highly prestigious, he sniffs, and highly dangerous. There are all sorts of magic traps to keep novices out, and even then, you must meet the approval of the elemental monsters. Deciding to know more, you press for information on the magic traps. Well, there's the hungry doors just ahead, but I know a trick to get to those. Simply say the words, dinner time, and they'll stop moving. Good information to know, I should really press him about the eye too, before he runs away. Ask about the eye. You ask the young acolyte if they know the whereabouts of the ruby that you seek. He becomes frightened once more when you mention the name. Yes, I know the eye that you seek. It belongs to the Cyclops himself, who resides in what is left of the Dwarven Halls over to the east. Follow the passage and passage and whatever you do, always make sure you stay heading east. There you will find it. Okay, always east. The young man points down the passage before pushing past you and running off. Try to catch up with him, asking for more information, but he darts under the portcullis you just entered. That's a bad idea. There's no point chasing him back through there. I should continue eastwards and find the Cyclops. Continue east. All oh, those eyes. I can see all those eyes. Cautiously, cautiously you creep along the passageway. After a short time, you reach a fork in the path with the path continuing northwards. Yeah, there's a broad, uh, stone, broad stone bridge. And the rest thing. At the fork, there's a bench of solid wood, and above the bench, a sign. Uh, I know that. That rogue fella told me to keep hitting S. Maybe I should have some more rest first. My stamina. Uh, I'm gonna rest a little. Sit on the bench and rest. Yep, now I'm full stamina. Let's continue. While the rest is appreciated, I should press on quickly. The eyes close. I can feel it. Continue onwards. Boing, 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 boing. You follow the path to the east. Soon enough, you arrive at a broad but cracked stone bridge with le which leads over a yawning subterranean chasm. On the other side of the bridge, you can see an archway carved to resemble a huge dwarven head. With no other options, you start to cross the bridge. No sooner have you taken a few steps than the floor begins to crumble. You break into a run to avoid the crumbling floor. Test your skill. I've got 10 skill. What do I do? I just click there we go. Of course. Skillful. You need a score of 10 or under. You needed a score of 10 or under. Roll the score of 9. Yay! You escape from the crumbling floor. What if I've gotten above 10? You sigh with relief. You can hear the monastery crashing down far below into the water. The masonry. The sound vibrates around the chamber and you wonder what creatures you have stirred in the darkness beyond. Lean over the edge into the darkness. You crawl to the edge and peer down into the gloom. Your ears just making out the sound of rushing water below. Somewhere far off, deep in the crevasse, you suddenly hear an unearthly wolf like howl. Fire top mountain seems full of strange surprises. There are wolves here. Pretty sure there are wolves here. The carved dwarven head archway looms ahead and you marvel at its construction. The previous inhabitants of Firetop Mountain were obviously once proud of their home, as shown in this high level of artistry. The futures had looked to have been chiseled into the rock face in a style that could only be dwarven design. Dwarves never cease to amaze me in their skill and artistry. Yeah, they're apparently very good. Enter! You enter the Dwarven entrance hall, it's everything you expected, lined with tall stone columns that stretch into the darkness, intricately carved in the image of Dwarven heroes of old. Click. Click. Cool. The weapon is cool. The stonework is incredible. I can see each beard here. Why would you want to see that? About halfway down the hall you notice a path that leads off to the left, behind one of the statues. That heads in the opposite direction to where I need to be going. Maybe I can have a quick look. Yeah, I'm gonna quickly go left. Oh no, 
not. Reach the ruins of what looked like an ancient bridge beneath the crevasse. Long since collapsed. You can just make out the other side into the far other than you can just make out the other side of it on the far side. There is no way you'll be able to make it to the other side to so decide your back. Okay. You return back to the broken hole. Settings. Ah, okay. Wait, what? No, cancel. Text. Font style. Dyslexic. Theme. Okay, I'm gonna go for themed. Font size. Line spacing. Okay, done. Whoa, that's too big. Text. Okay. There we go. Continue northwards. As you walk through the hall, you notice this movement on the outside of the corner of your eye. Something appears to be watching you. Oh, what's watching me? I have no time to chase strange creatures. I must find the eye. I want to know what was watching me. You reach a junction with three different passageways. With e east still in the foremost of your mind, there's only one option you want to take. Okay, I didn't even get to choose. You continue along the passage heading east, soon you come across another junction. Ahead to the east, you can see a wooden door. The other passageway continues to the north. While the passageway looks interesting, I need to keep pushing east. It looks like I'll be opening that wooden door. Okay. There he is. You head east to the wooden door. Trying it, the door opens and you enter a small room. Your eyes widen as you look around to see that the walls of the room are covered in ornate stone. Mosaics and marble inlays give this room a kind of beauty that you have never seen before. In a corner of the room is a large metal statue of a one-eyed creature. In its single eye is a sparkling jewel. That's a freaky creature. It has to be the eye of the Cyclops. Well, yeah, it's a Cyclops. It's only got one eye. Okay, the key. Did not give you any quiche did not give you any advice on how to take the eye. You could perhaps place it out of the socket with your sword. There's nothing else in the room and the only exit is the red human. I'm gonna try to take the jewel because I need it. You approach the statue cautiously. Scampering behind you makes you flash around. But it is only a rat. You feel that the jewel is suddenly in place. You try to press it off and as you work you hear an ominous creaking noise. To your horror the statue is beginning to move. You jump down and draw your weapon. The iron cyclops cranes his head around towards you and slips down from its pedestal. Okay, I'm gonna battle it. Drawing your weapon, you ready yourself to battle against the strange creature. Its ruby eye glints in the cave light as the animated statue twists its neck, searching for you. The heavy iron footsteps ring through the cave floor as it approaches, slowly at first, but quickly gaining speed as they're getting used to its new body. Raises both hands, flashing its forked tongue, ready to strike. Fight! Oh my word, it's you! What's it gonna do first? Quick jab. Piercing strike. Boom! Move. Ah, it's really close! Uh, attack! Yeah, uh, okay, it's really close to me. Oh, Move! No, it stunned me! Stunned, can I attack until next round? Okay, I don't know why that would have worked. Move! Move! And quick check. Piercing strike. Boom! Dead! I got eight souls left. What are the souls even for? I have defeated the iron cyclops. You sit back and rest from the exhausting battle. Wherely you approach the statue, the jewel glints in the light, tempting you. Quiche wasn't wrong. The eye is certainly a thing of beauty. I'm gonna take it. You praise the jewel from it from the still statue, which is surprisingly heavy in your hand. You put it in your pack. Now to deliver this lonely ruby to Zagor. I'm still not sure why I need to do this, but I have to trust Kish. Surely yet more fame and glory awaits me. I don't believe it. Ah, uh, very clever. Claim the eye. 
claim the eye of Cyclops is Alexandra of Black Sand. What do you do now? Examine the statue further. As you examine the statue, you notice that one of its breastplate sections is loose. When you open this, a small key is inside. Zagor's key found. Put a smile, you put the key in your pack. And set off back down the junction. I'm gonna go here. Head north! You enter another room guarded by stone statues. The statues in the room look like fearsome dwarven warriors. They're gonna come alive, aren't they? There are two exits from this room. The door to the left sounds rather quiet, while the door on the right seems to have someone talking behind it. I need to try and reach Zago quickly. The left door sounds more inviting. Nah, I'm gonna go through the right hand door. Because there are people talking. Goblins! As you look around, you hear mischievous chattering. You swing around to see two goblins leering at you. Before you have time to react, uh, I'm gonna fight them. Ah, he's right next to me! That is really close. I don't like it. And piercing strike. Boom! Attack. Yes! Attack. Aww. You suck. Move. Big jab. Bam! You're dead. Piercing strike. No! You suck! Attack. Clashing. You're gonna die, dude. I don't know how I want that. Attack. Ah, uh, you suck. Attack. Yes! And attack again. And another clash. Please win. Yay, I won. I am triumphant. I have defeated the goblins! A search of the room reveals nothing of any value. Although an old box in the corner contains a wooden mallet and stump of wood sharpened at one end. Ooh, I'm gonna take them. I'm gonna take everything. You retrieve the mallet and stake from the old box, you, then you store them in your pack. You might find some use for these tools as you explore deeper into the mountain. With nothing else of interest in the room, you decide to press on. Exit. You carry on through the passageway and enter into another room of similar size. The room is splendidly decorated with a polished marble floor and rough walls. Interesting. There are a number of paintings hanging on the wall and a dwarven woman is staring at, the, at them intensely, giggling madly. Her hair is unkept and her clothes are ragged. Her eyes are sunken and tired, as though she has not slept for weeks. At her feet are an assortment of strange trinkets, small bones, teeth, gold pieces, bits of half eaten food and splintered pieces of wood. Some of these objects have been placed underneath various paintings. Master, master, look what Tamil has brought for you today, she murmurs. Why would a dwarf be freely allowed to wander around here alone? I'm gonna speak with the dwarf. You ask the dwarf who she is talking to. She tries to stiff her foot of giggling, then bursts into peals of shrieking, la shrieking laughter. Why, Tamil is talking to the master, of course. Her eyes dart around the room as she chuckles to herself, then she nods. The master always is here. Here, here, there, everywhere. She's mad. You ask them who the master is, suddenly the giggling stops. The voice coming out of Tamil's mouth is no longer her own, but that of a deep baritone of a man. Alexandra of Black Sand, it sneers, the great hero of the Battle of Grey Rock, come to slay the terrifying warlock of Firetop Mountain. You realize that Tomiel has been possessed and sent utterly mad. This poor dwarf is possessed, most likely the warlock. Poor Tamil collapses to the ground and you find yourself dragged by some demonic force towards one of the paintings, that of Zagor himself. I'm gonna find a weapon you pack and fight it. Which item will you try against the gaze of the painting? No weapon, no. The jewel, no. Plunge a wooden stake into it. If he was a vampire, I'd do that. I'm gonna do the jewel. Keith told you to give the eye of the Cyclops to Zagor and that you would see what happens. This would be the perfect time to try it out. Of course. Pull the great jewel from the pack and hold it up against the painting. Zagor's expression turns to one of fear, uh, surprise, then fear. And then, and then the painting swirls and becomes still. The power is gone and the painting is just a picture of an old man. Zagor fears the eye of the Cyclops. I think I now understand Keisha's plan. I got two skill! Yay! Well, my skill is like maxed. 
at 10. You leave the unnerving room full of paintings and the poor crazed dwarf. I don't even see where the dwarf is. It just, just up the passageway there's a small alcove in the rock. Yay, I'm gonna rest. I don't need to. Plus 5 stamina. Head northwards. Ah, oh, there the thing is. Before long you arrive in another junction. Branch off east and the west. East or west? I'm gonna go west because there's a door that way. Open a door. Ah, uh, there's apparently nothing coming from inside. You try the handle and the door opens into a room with a sandy floor. You can hear the sound of fast flowing water. In the corner of the room is a pile of rubble, mainly stones and dust, but there are also two odd shaped pieces of wood and a length of rope. A door in the north wall leads on. Examine the bits of wood. Study the length of rope. Oh, I'm rope. You pick up the rope. It looks normal. In fact, it looks as if it might be quite useful. You open the pack to put it in. Suddenly, it comes alive in your fingers. Snakes quickly up your arm and attempts to wrap itself around your neck. Okay, I'm gonna test my luck. And why is it green? Boom. Test your luck. Ah, oh, lucky. You need a score of 8 or under, and you roll the score of six. Oh, that was lucky. You cut the rope with your weapon. As the rope tightens around you, you squirm and struggle to reach for your weapon. Quickly but carefully, you slice the rope and it falls to the ground, still twitching as though alive. The enchanted rope is finally disposed of. There appears to be magic littered throughout Fountain Mountain. Either Zagor is careless or he's up to something. Leave through the north door. Ooh, it's a lake! The passage leads you northwards. The rocky floor becomes sandy until eventually you are walking on coarse sand. You notice the passage is widening ahead and you can hear a flowing river. I've heard about this river. Who knows what lives in it? Probably something really freaky. You continue until you find yourself in a large cavern through which a river flows. Head towards the river bank. You are in the south bank of an underground river facing across its black depths. There appear to be four ways of crossing. Four! I see one. Yeah, I see one. Oh, one, two. To your left, a rusted bell bears a sign. Ferry service, two gold pieces. Please ring. There is also a small raft in front of you on the beach with a long stick resting beside it, which you could use to butt across the river. A rickety old bridge also crosses the water to your right. It winds its way into the darkness of the cavern. I'm not sure who would use a ferry down here, but maybe that's my best option. I'm not sure I trust that bridge. Um. Okay. Let's see. Bio attacks inventory. I got 39 gold. I got three resurrection stones. Oh yeah. And I got a lot of miscellaneous stuff. Okay. Back. Okay. So I'm gonna leave this video of the Warlock Fire Top Mountain here the second video in the series. I'm not sure how long this game is. I'm not sure when I'll find the Zagor guy. The Warlock. I wonder how he'll look. Okay. But, yeah. If you do watch this video and you come up here, please leave a comment and tell me which path do you think I should take. Uh, I think I might go for the ferry, unless you know others that work better. So, this is the end of the video. Leave it here. Bye!